don't get twisted. Like, even the most confident people struggle with their confidence at times. I messaged so many pros. Yo, have you got any advice? Bare of them ignored me. Yeah. But some of them replied. Yeah. Uh, for men under 50, suicide is the number one killer of us. Mm. And for all men, all ages, it's 70, it kills 75% of us. Clothing and culture and fashion, it doesn't have to just be on the surface. It can mean more. I got to main board from Unlisted in like five months. They might be looking for someone just like how you are, but you're out here acting like someone else. Yeah. And I'm, I'm quite unique and different and I don't like looking like everyone else. Yeah. So will people accept me for who I am? Hi guys, welcome to the Be Cool Studios podcast. I'm Compton and I'm today I've got a special guest with us. Mr. Kofi Joseph. Welcome to the Be Cool Podcast. What's good, bro? What you saying? Bro, it's been a minute. Um, we'll kind of look forward to, to welcoming you to the podcast. So, who is Kofi Joseph? Um, I'd say, first off, I am a mental health ad- advocate, 100%. Um, I've got a mental health business. Uh, so, you could say entrepreneur, uh, commercial model, um, and professional basketball player. Yeah, 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 a bunch of other things, but yeah, they're like my main. Yeah, you, so. you're a man of many talents, to say the least. Couple. couple. <laughs> yeah. So, um, going back to the where I first uh, became aware of you as person was obviously basketball. Mm. I'm not even going to tell people who I support, but you know it is what it is. <laughs> um, the basketball. So, how did basketball and modeling? became a thing for you like where did it start did it go for basketball first then modeling or modeling then basketball i'd say it was definitely basketball first i started playing i've been playing basketball now like 20 years bro like i'm in it two decades deep. yeah yeah, yeah. um modeling i've only been doing it like two years okay. right now yeah um but i've always loved taking photos i've always loved fashion i've always loved the details like i think i'm on the spectrum of like maybe autism in low, super low, but I love, I love details and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, really started with basketball. I'm from Birmingham, grew up there. Um, fell in love with it by accident, I'd say, from my mentor, Mr. Thompson. He put a ball in my hands and I kind of went from there. Um, moved to America when I was like 18. And then, yeah, my journey just kept going from kept there. Going from there. That's some, um, I, I didn't go to America, but I did play basketball myself for about eight years. Um, so I know a little bit about the game mm-hmm. um, and the, the structure of it and how it works, etc. And with someone like yourself who's played it abroad as well, I bet their lifestyle is slightly different. There's a lot more traveling, a lot more work mm-hmm. that goes on. Because I think people tend to um, get it all misunderstood how it is because they don't understand that you have to put in a lot of work to get to where you're at. They almost sometimes go out and say, oh, you're a tall guy, you're athletic, oh, yeah, it's easy tall. for you. Yeah, that's the thing, like, I play professional now, like, six, seven years. In the real world, like, the normal world, being tall is is a different sport in the basketball world. Like, I'm, like, six five, six six, Which is quite I normal. Mean, yeah, I'm, like, average. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, We've got yeah, players yeah. shorter yeah, yeah. and taller, so it's not really that big of an advantage. advantage. It's Then it comes down to the work and what you do and your skill set and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, man, when you're talking about travel, bro, I've been in so many airports. I've been in so many countries, cities, towns, villages, all because of a ball, man. It's it's it's, it's amazing. It's amazing where um, something like sports can take you, isn't it? Um, and the, the amount of people you can meet and um, places that you can go, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, I do miss it. I do miss playing ball. I haven't physically played for about five years. I'm wow. not gonna try and pretend like uh, I'm any good. People always used to doubt me, like being someone short yeah. playing ball. Um, but yeah, going into the modeling, then. So how did that come about? How did that start? for you where did that where did it where did it get that trigger from what was it that triggered that originally i've always loved modeling you know like always i've always loved photos i've always loved fashion and the, when i was younger everyone else was like do it like i knew like my cousins did modeling everything mm-hmm. but no one ever looked at me like it was even an option yeah, yeah so i'm like oh all right then cool and then as time went on 
the bug never ever went so i just started doing my research and stuff but if i like something i'll just start so yeah, yeah, yeah. if i like anything about photography i'll just go get a camera you feel go me on, and then try it and then get some outfits and then just try create something do you know what i mean and i was doing that from the ground up for for ages I had no agency um and yeah that's where my love just started going and i just kept trying i kept the belief and then eventually during covid probably like five years after i even started i was gonna say i'm done i'm not yeah. doing it anymore but then i ended up like meeting people and getting scouted in manchester and with the agency that i always wanted to be with so that's when my modeling kind of actually started again, but more so properly. Yeah, and you start, I'm guessing you started taking a little bit more se like serious. I didn't know yeah. what a test shoot was. I just like taking <laughs> photos. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. talking like there was this thing called. Um, I learned what TFP was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I learned. Then I started. You know, on like Instagram, we've got all these like photographers, like photographer groups. Yeah, yeah. I went to London, yeah, and it was like. I think it was like the portrait mission or something. And there oh, was like 50, oh. 50 photographers from all over the place buying tickets and they needed like five models. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. So I've gone London and I've got clothes and big, big London, you know, in public photographers taking photos, public coming, everyone's looking what's going on. And I was just like, I don't even know if this is modeling or not, but I actually love the craft. Yeah, yeah. I love the beauty in it. I love location. I love the clothing, how it all works together. I like learning about the details. It's not just about, oh, yeah, I get paid to take photos. Yeah. That's a bonus, but I actually am quite intrigued by the whole thing. By the whole process. And then my mother carries it's, on. It's good that you mentioned um, events because uh, that is actually the the way me and my um, business partner me at, it's wavy, at bro. an event. It's um, you do You do link up with some really cool people mm -hmm. from there, and it's a good opportunity to network, especially in the creative industry, to meet new people because you never know when you might need somebody or somebody might need you for something as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be, like you said, it could be trade for print or it could just be um, a paid job as well. So you never yeah, know. Never so know. it's always cool. But we always recommend, like, if you can, not every single one, but if you can make it to a, a photography meetup, make sure you go check it out. That's sick, bro. You make meet sure so many, like, even out. meeting models, meeting people in the public. And as a model, yeah, you, you... Like now for me modeling, like I've been modeling like two years now. I've done all Comes sorts easy. of jobs everywhere. But like, there's going to be times where you're not just in the studio, you're on location right. and it's not a derelict, empty location. No. It's smack bang in the middle of town or you're on a bus <laughs> where people are commuting all day and you need to be you need locked to be on your in game. and do your thing. Yeah. After doing stuff like that in big, big London and Birmingham and 40, 50 people like, hey, can you come here? Can you come here? Can you come here? And public like, what's going on? Because it's a crowd. Now it's just worked to me now. You need to have a certain sense of confidence, mm -hmm. self-confidence as well, isn't it? And remind yourself that, look, you're doing this because you love it, you enjoy it, and don't care what yeah. everyone else says. Once the brand and the people that you're with, the creative team you're with, understand mm -hmm. what um, what you're about and and feel your vibe and energy, I think I'm I'm big on energy when yeah. it comes to when it comes to taking portraits and stuff of people. If I get a good energy from somebody, bro, we be coming out there with some banging images. I'm yeah, so awesome you work, bro. Wavy. That, Even on our shoot that we had here, you know the rock star one. We yeah, was all yeah. vibing, bro. Just making that, that, it work, and that makes the whole experience a lot better. I'm sure you, like you said, you you've had that energy, and then you'll go to shoots where it's like dead, <laughs> dead. Where is Dead. So it's not all what you what you what it cracks up to be sometimes, but what? you just got to go in there with a the mindset like I'll do the best that I can mm. to make whatever brand I'm working with look good or whatever, or make the the photographer um, images look good. If anything happens from there on out, that's all up to them. Once I know I've given my all, I'm yeah. Sure you so you can do. You know what? I've, um, what helped me was in terms of like feeling shy. Because obviously everyone's looking at the model yeah. a lot of the time. Even if there's a photographer taking pictures of the model, they're looking at the model. So the model feels very... Intimidating. Intimidated, but trying to be locked in, but trying not to look, but trying to not be off character. I just wave at people now. So like yeah, I yeah. did a shoot in um, South of Keys on the bridge. It was Mother's Day. Hella women walking <laughs> by and like husbands with their wives and blah, 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 boyfriends, girlfriends. I'm, walk I'm, just, I'm trying to pose and they're walking by looking. Because remember, you got to get changed next yeah. to where you're shooting on, on a bridge and that. And I would just wave at people. 
And I'd be like, hey, um, mom. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, happy Mother's Day. Yeah. And now they've gone from looking and staring to, to, smiling, and to interacting. smiling, interacting. And now you're just back into, yeah, they're not, they don't even care anymore. They've just kept moving. Like, yeah. thank you. Have a nice day. Cool. Now you're back to modeling. Yeah. So I, I try and if anyone's looking, like, what's that? Hi, how you doing? Um, like, I'll just talk to them. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I think that helps. Have you ever had any incident where it's gone the other way? Where not necessarily you in terms of your confidence or other people start questioning, asking too much question, um, someone Oof. being aggravated by you guys being there or whatever. Have you had something like that before? Yeah, 100%, but I don't care, me. <laughs> I really how like did you, you deal with it? And what happened and how did you deal with it? I kept doing what I was doing, bro. I'm here to do a job, bro. And the worst, worst thing was we weren't on like prohibited land or anything like that. We're just doing our thing. Yeah. You just wanted to be in our and all up in our business. We've got no problem. If you want to watch, cool. But what you're not going to do is throw me off my game because you want to stand there and look and be like, oh, you're a model. Just because you've got your own preconceived of what models are. Yeah. Bro, you don't know nothing about me. And I don't care what you think or what you'll run. I'm still going to do my thing because I'm probably going to never see you again. And my photos, I refuse, are not going to bang. Because if I'm out here in the cold right now and we don't get the shot yep. and we're not coming back here, you've ruined my day now. Yep. And you've wasted everybody's Maybe time. Else's time. You're, not, you're, you're not important. You're not a yeah. big factor. So I just ignore it, man. I feel time it time is definitely of the essence, when, especially when you're out and about. And we all know, <laughs> let's not talk about the weather. That could, you know, that could oh. be either way, right? It's windy. <laughs> too hot, too cold, oh, snow. Man. That's what I learned as a model first. I didn't realise, yeah, <laughs> that as a model, you shoot opposite seasons. So it's winter. You know, you shoot you know, in spring and wi and summer next year. Now you get me, like so. I'm like out now in the cold. It's rainy in a vest, shorts, and all, all, all no that. top, swimming shorts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In post, we're gonna add some light to the to the pic, bro. It's freezing, bro. <laughs> but then when you see the end product, you're like. Yep. Oh blown away again it. but people don't actually see that that side of things and not everyone understand that side of the the um, creative industry that these things happen mm -hmm. um, especially when you're working for a bigger brand because they have to be one step ahead always yeah. always um, so in terms of the confidence obviously we can tell that you're a confident guy where did that come from where is that something that you've developed throughout your life or is it something that came naturally to you as oh. you were growing up I'd say don't get twisted like even the most confident people struggle with their confidence at times because confidence isn't a thing where it's just always high or it's yeah. always low it ebbs and flows do you know what I mean and as you're growing as an individual and hopefully as you're trying to make bigger steps you're going to be a big fish in a small pond and then a small fish in a big pond so your confidence is going to waver at times yeah. but I think confidence for me is like what Kobe Bryant said where it's like it comes from the work the preparation the reason why I'm so confident in certain stuff is because I've put the work in. Yeah. It's like going into an exam when you've studied, bro, you've done everything. You actually shouldn't have that anxiety, shouldn't so, have that stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you put the work in yeah. and whatever happens, happens. You put yourself in the best position to be successful. And I think with my confidence, it comes from wanting to be comfortable, being anxious and feeling not in line. I just don't like that feeling. Yeah. So if I can help myself ahead of time, yeah, then I'm gonna. So it basically, is uh, that preparation before mm. you actually go into a situation. Yeah. So what advice would you give to like a young up and coming model now who want to get into the industry? Um, in terms of like building their confidence, I'd say be yourself because I started modeling at I was like 28, 29. That's late. I was messaging 15 year old models on Instagram. Yo, I see you've been modeling for ages. So you're sick. Have you got any advice? Yeah. Most people are not humble enough to no, do that, bro. No, 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 no. Anyone, yeah. if I see you're doing well, I don't care where, what, like, I've got, take the ego away. Yeah. I'd rather look like an idiot, but then get the answers. Yeah. So I can really improve fast. I don't have time at 28 as a model to be learning 10 years worth of experience in 10 years, I ain't got it. No. I need yeah. to learn it in months and then weeks sometimes. Weeks and get it cracking. So yeah. I think in terms of for confidence, ask questions. Kobe yeah. Bryant's out here and he's the guy and he's asking people questions because he wants an answer. Yeah. And then you can go from there. Asking people who are doing better than you in a field, 
is like it, it makes them feel good that you've asked do you know what i mean it's it's not a crime to actually ask is it um and we spoke about something on a previous po- previous podcast um where we talk about a uh, criticism mm. and getting criticism from people who are not actually within your circle who don't understand the situation that you're going through the situation that you're in yeah. and the work that you put in behind the scenes and um i find like i had that and i struggled and we'll go into this a little bit later when we talk about your mental health um work one other thing can i really add just before we move on is with asking for help a lot of people have anxiety of oh what if i get ignored yeah or get it's wrong, okay. Or they don't get the it's, right answer. Yeah, like, to. it's all right to get ignored. Before I turned pro as a basketball player, I messaged so many pros. Yo, have you got any advice? Bare of them ignored me. Yeah. But some of them replied. Yeah. All I need to care about is you the ones that one. replied. You get me? You just need one to reply. Then I got to it? a level of using the advice of the guys that replied. I climbed up the ranks. Now the same guys that I was messaging for advice... With, I'm friends with them now because I'm on the same level as them. Then yeah. they're checking like, oh, Cove, I didn't know that you messaged me like six years ago. <laughs> but to me now, it doesn't really matter because yeah, yeah. the only thing that matters on. is the answers, yeah. which is to help me. And the same with the modeling. Bro, you're going to message hella people and you're going to be stuck in their message requests. It is what it is. You just need to focus on the people that give you the advice. The rest is not even important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think that helps with confidence of knowing that it's not going to go perfectly. Yeah. But stay focused yeah i think also what um can also be a, a a game changer when you talk about being yourself like i find that a lot of models or newer models tend to try and be Another too one. much yeah, yeah, yeah they overdo it in front of the camera rather than be themselves like i've i know for a fact i've worked with models who i would say maybe give me a smile you know be yourself like if you were around your family, your friends. I want that person mm-hmm. because I gravitate more towards someone who give me that sort of energy. Mm-hmm. And I find that the images we produce a lot better. So for models, new and upcoming models, just don't try and be doing all kind of fancy poses. When, you know, don't just what keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple, you know what I mean? Because that in itself will get you to a lot of doors because people will gravitate towards your energy and your vibe. 100%. What I would say as well is a lot of people don't know who they are anyway. So when you say to someone, be yourself, they're like, what? Because a lot of people don't go within to find out who they actually are. When you do that, it's a lot easier to be yourself. But then that next challenge is, will people accept me for who I am? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. a lot of people are scared for people to see the real them. Yeah. But that's its next battle. But um But once you get over those boundaries, those 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 barriers, then you know, you can basically take on the mm-hmm. world. You don't know what people are looking for, especially in modeling, like they might be looking for someone just like how you are, but you're out here acting like someone else. Yeah. Like <laughs> I ain't got, got time. Like, as soon as the camera comes on, it's almost like a different persona, a different, completely different person. Modern, just comes with... Modern's got this fake persona, though. Like, if you ask anyone on the street, what do you think models are like? Nine they'll, times out of ten, they they'll give you, you. They'll girl you. They'll yeah. give you some, some mad, some mad version where you're like, what? But because they're going off like supermodels yeah. or TV or American Next Top Model, little stuff that they've got, not actually meeting models, yeah. but they're creating this whole idea of models of negative things. I mean, like, oh, I bet they're all stuck up. I met hella models who are cool as hell. If anything, mad insecure. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm just like, uh, but because models got this like persona. They have to kind of like keep it up as well sometimes. Yeah, like they're going into it thinking this is how I need to be low key, yeah. which is wild. And I'm glad I got into modeling older because I know who I am. I'm established through basketball as well. Yep. Where... You're comfortable being in, in in a different crowd every week. You know, people yeah. being on your backs all the time. I've been in countries There's... where I don't even understand what anyone's saying. I'm in a room and I'm the only person that speaks English. And people are looking at me, talking to each other in another language. And I'm like, yo, this yeah. is mad. Once you can get comfortable with that, you can be comfortable on set with six people. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Who speak English, like, just talk to people, say hi, yeah. how are you doing? Like, ask people about themselves. Yeah. Like, you're on set, they're people. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they've got a life outside of that as well. Mm, and then the out. whole set usually ends up being a lot more comfortable and better. So do you think a lot of that has to do with social media as well? 
and the social media is mad, as bro. The, you know the way it's kind of presented um as in everything looks rosy it's a highlight reel instagram uh, is a highlight reel and i have to deal with it because with my mental health business i'm trying to combat that and being a model stress but also being an athlete stress but also being like a person you're just seeing everyone's highlight reel and yeah. having to remind yourself daily, yo, people only post the best parts. So remember that, including yourself. Yep, yep, yep. You might be making someone else feel how you feel by seeing someone else. Yeah, so you have Do to you know be what I mean? careful. It'd be careful, but then don't go overboard and posting everything negative, but just understand perspective and that not everything you see is the complete picture. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what's super important with social media. I struggle myself, like, when I'm trying to build, whenever you're at a lower level doing something, trying to graft, you're always seeing people doing better than you in what and you're you, trying to do yeah. because you're starting to do research now. Yeah. And you're only going to research people that are doing well because that's where you're trying to get to. Yeah, but you don't research what hap what they did before they got there, what the struggles, the people who are actually mm -hmm. struggling and, yeah. and still making ends meet, but they're struggling. Um, going into like you talk about your mental health stuff um, tell us a little bit more about that and how it started what triggered that for you to start that that sort of movement I'd say so why not I it's a mental health business which has got two strands got the education side where we're in primary secondary college university workplaces businesses all that about educating on mental health but not the mental health like everyone thinks, because now everyone, like it's like a fad for mental health. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm anxiety. I got anxiety. Yeah. Oh, I'm depressed. Well, you don't. It's like, have you ever had a cold, yeah? And then you're walking around like, oh, I've got the flu. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> then you actually get the flu. Yeah. Bro, the next time you get a cold, you're not wishing it was the, the flu, flu because the flu nearly killed you. Now yeah. you can walk around, you feel a little bit ill. Yeah. That's how it was. That's how it is with like mental health. If you've actually been depressed when you've had a one bad day you're not quick to be, to be putting it out into the universe oh, I'm no. depressed because you've experienced it do you know what I mean and I think for me uh, I just want to destigmatize it in terms of mental health for me personally is a spectrum when you're happy and you're gassed you're over the moon you're excited positive mental health when you're upset stressed or the negative side that's the negative side of mental health all society talks about with mental health is the bad side. Yeah. So it's either you're nothing or on the negative side. Yeah. But for me, it's like you don't shoot at a basketball hoop with your eyes closed. So when you're in the negative place, you got to have somewhere to aim for. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And when you're on the positive side, understanding that it can go, it can go it can the go opposite left. way. Yeah. But you can also come back. Yeah. Because life goes like, like this, that. mental health goes like this. And when you understand that, you can you can understand the ebbs and flows and when it comes to destigmatizing mental health all i really want to get is trying to make mental health somewhat cool yeah where it's so it's not, cool to talk about yeah where it's not taboo yeah do you know what we, i mean we talk about every and anything nowadays so why not mental health yeah when you ask people are oh, how are you feeling and they're down in the dumps. Oh, I'm fine. You're not fine? I think that's a, a common because um, I'm talking from experience myself. Right. Um, we, I went through that phase. So. Um, I was in like probably the darkest place I'll ever been um, after losing my first studio that I had. And I struggled. I lost a lot of money. I struggled. And it came down to a couple of conversations with people who were close to me mm -hmm. for me to understand that. I'm okay. It's okay it's not okay. to be okay. Yeah. So um, I then had a, a chat, a, converse, a conversation with my partner um, at the time. So I basically came home from work, my previous job, and I just felt like everything was just falling apart. Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy what I was doing. Um, my business had just basically fallen fallen down. Um, I was arguing all the time at home because mm. it was it's like the littlest thing that would just like all pile up. Oh, and it just and then when it does, when you do explode, it's like bam. Mm. So many times we've threatened to broke up with my partner because I was basically the problem, not mm -hmm. us. Yeah, if that makes sense. Um, and I just spoke to her, broke down, and literally just said, "Look, I'm not in the right place at the moment. I'm not in a good place. I need to. I need help." Mm. I, I sat in my car for couple of hours that night contemplating all the bad things that you can think of 
I should run my car over a bridge. Mm-hmm. I should jump off a bridge myself. Mm-hmm. Should I get a set of rope and go hang myself? Like, there's all these things that play in the head. And that was because I was struggling, but I couldn't actually tell anybody without feeling, like you talk about that stigma of being judged. Yeah. Like, as a black man, male, young black men. Black males, mad. Right? We don't talk so to I nobody. Shouldn't, I shouldn't talk about it. And... To my surprise, I spoke to, obviously, Damar, my business partner, Damar, and I spoke to my family. Bro, the amount of support and understanding, I could not believe that these people actually cared. Because almost, I almost felt like they, people wouldn't care if mm-hmm. I spoke about my mental health. And the thing is, like, it didn't, it really didn't need to get to that, that point because they would have been supportive and Regardless. caring from Jump Street. But if you're not pretending like everything's fine, then you can get help earlier. But because of the stigma and the taboo yeah. is why you're like, I can't talk to nobody. And you're going to let it pile up, bro. Nah. Like, if, if you had a headache today and I said, yo, how you feeling? You have you wouldn't think twice to be like, yo, I got a headache, you know, I got a migraine. What's the difference of that to, yeah, man, you know, like I'm feeling a bit stressed at work or, yo, I'm stressed about my girl or... Um, I'm feeling a bit anxious about this. There's no difference, bro. Yeah. And then, oh, you got a headache. All right, cool. Let me get you some paracetamol. Let me get you some ibuprofen. Have you been drinking water? Yeah. Boom, solutions. Bam, 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 yeah, bam, yeah. bam. The, the water you, thing triggers me really feel... nicely because every time I tell the mar I've got a headache, that's the first thing you ask Boom, me. straight solution. Have you drank water today? You get me. But with <laughs> mental health, we want to drag it out a year, two years. Yeah. Now it's, yo, I'm feeling suicidal. But the thing is, all the people that are around you, uh, you for a long time are probably none the wiser because you're acting fine but yeah. really you're dying inside and they've all gone through some phase of it at some it's point it's human bro yeah it's, yeah, yeah it's human like you said that's and I've stigma, experienced it? it yeah and I'm I'm sick of the stigma I've been talking about mental health and people are saying to me uh, maybe we shouldn't call it mental health we should use a different word nah bro because that's feeding in to the stigma it's just mental health when you're happy and that, it's a positive mental health. When you're on the opposite side, you, you're on the negative side. Yeah. It ebbs and flows. Do you know what I mean? So I'm trying to use my platform and I got a psychology degree. I've been an NHS support worker with like people with body dysmorphia, um, bipolar, autism, the lot. Yeah. So I've got the education side, the other side, but then the being a personal, of being an elite athlete, gone through it, even being a model, yeah. gone through it. I'm seeing other models getting booked or I'm not getting booked. And you're thinking, oh, it's because they look better than me. Boom, your mind's racing. Yeah. I've experienced mental health in hella negative ways in different mediums, but also positive in hella different mediums. And I understand because I'm so open with it that I can help people. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So especially the young culture, because the older generation, they might be far gone yeah. because they're in there, what they're on. Cool. But the younger generation are going to get older. So if we can get to them and help them when they get older, they're yeah. going to pass it on. Each one, teach one. You get me? I'm I'm not going to, I'm not trying to save the world. I'm yeah. not, I'm just trying to destigmatize it so where people can help themselves. They can aid in mm-hmm. their own rescue because there's experts out here that are in specific parts of mental health that can help yeah, rather yeah. than me trying to help everyone well, with everything. Yeah. Why don't I go, why don't I help you decide to go to a specialist they can, sort, they can help you a lot better than I can. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's essentially what Yeah, I'm well, to... it's, um, it's, like so we talk about it with, with social media, it's it just becomes such a, a norm now to to share your good times, mm-hmm. et cetera, on social media. And, you know, people then assume that, you know, your life's all, all rosy. Because how many times have we heard about models, actors, um, actresses, big actresses recently, I think some guys from like Love Island as well. Yeah, that's um, every year. That. Their whole life, you know, because mm-hmm. they're struggling and because they're also in the public eye mm-hmm. constantly, you almost feel like you need to put on that persona, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And you, it needs to be constant. It needs to be night and day. Comparisons are free for joy, man. Like, for real, like... Comparing yourself, like, obviously you talk about, like, seeing other models and going through that phase where you've seen other models who are doing well, um, you know, but we potentially don't know how long it took them to get there. But obviously mm-hmm. we're looking at it from a, a, a phone screen. Yeah. Bro, what I've learned, yeah, <laughs> you're seeing all these models posting every single, every single day on jobs, Yeah. 
I've witnessed models getting beer content on the day on the day and haven't worked in two weeks but they've posted every single day from that one what? day of work yeah. not everything is always as it seems bro yeah. I'm just saying but I've even had agencies say yo make sure you get a lot of BTS and keep posting because clients want you when they know you're busy busy you get me? Even yeah. if you're at home chilling, ain't worked, nothing. You'd be at home Keep for like posting, a, bro. For, for a week. And you get me? So when I started, when I started thinking of everything, I said, bro, we're not even going down the rabbit hole <laughs> because not everything is always as it seems. Don't get twisted. On the flip side, there might be models that are working every single day. Yes, yeah. And I'm happy for them. Clap for them because there's going to be times where I'm busy. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be bringing negative vibes to my thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to be doing my thing. And hopefully people are happy for me. Like I've been happy for other people because everyone's got their time. So with the social media and the modeling thing, bro, I go for it now. I'm still modeling. And I'm like, yo, I ain't worked in a minute. And I'm seeing it go on Instagram. Boom. On shoot, on shoot. Your agency is posting BTS of everyone at work. You're like, oh, now you're feeling anxious. You want to run up in your own agency? Like, yo, what's going on? Like, Why am I not working? Kitchen, yeah. But just stay calm. When it's your time, it's your time. Your Focus time on what else you need to focus on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm I'm going into, um, sticking into the sort of like the fashion bit, um, obviously we are, or we do know that you're also bringing out uh, um, a few uh, clothing bra um, lines mm -hmm. to highlight the movement a little bit more, you know, spread the word even further. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. How did that come about? I've always loved fashion, you know, as I said, always loved fashion, but I'm an artist at heart as well. So, I paint bags, shoes, murals, basketball courts, paint anything I can get my hands on. So it originally started with me and I'm I'm quite unique and different and I don't like looking like everyone else. Yeah. So I like having my own thing, I like standing out and just... Like Jimi Hendrix style. Thing. Yeah, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, I, like, it, yeah, I, like yeah, doing, that was I just like doing me, if that yeah, means. Yeah. One day I'm a skater, next minute I'm on some roadman vibe dress-wise or wearing an all pink suit. I'm on what I'm on when I'm on what I'm on. Yeah. But with the fashion, I just like to create stuff that other people don't have and I love colours. Yeah. And then obviously now I'm doing uh, more lines with like mental health and stuff. It's a part of your mental health. When you when you look good, you feel good. It makes people feel good about themselves. Yeah, yeah. And I've started making pieces now of messages within the clothes. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because I know clothing and culture and fashion it doesn't have to just be on the surface. It can mean more. Yeah. Because it's like, I've, I've put stuff out and at first I wanted people to just rock with wine and I because it looked good. And I had one person say to me, hey, Kofi, I've been feeling really depressed and suicidal. The top that I bought from you, I put it on that day because I knew what wine I represented and what it was so much more. And I was like, raw, that, you're not it. posting it for drip yeah you put that top on in your house when you didn't want to go outside just to feel better i was like yeah i need to i need to start you need to think about it a I little need, bit more i need deeper. to put more process into the stuff because it's 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 bigger than just drip yeah but for some people drip's super important for them to feel good yeah and i like to look good it's just I mean? finding that balance isn't it yeah. it's finding that balance is if uh, you can do both yeah i've i've personally feel like that's my lane of what i want to go down of stuff that has a message, represents something, but also looks good. So, yeah, man, just I just create capsule collections like of stuff that means something. So it's not going to be like a clothing brand where you can buy stuff all the time. Men's Mental Health Month is next month. I've made a small number of pieces to highlight um, men's mental health. Uh, for men under 50, suicide is the number one killer of us. Mm. And for all men, all ages, it's 70, it kills 75% of us. Do you know what I mean? Like, to me, that is mad. And I yeah. know people that have committed suicide or been close to it. And I'm like, the rate that men kill each other anyway and suicide still number mm -hmm. one is an issue to me and yeah. I don't like it. Um, and I've also felt suicidal in times and I'm like, nah, now that I'm not there, how can I help? So there's a, have you heard of the story of the Chinese bamboo tree? No, no, it's, no, this one. It's a Chinese parable where it's basically you, apparently you plant a bamboo tree seed and you have to water it every day for like five years or Before whatever. It actually and it doesn't sprout in the five years, doesn't sprout consistency every day for five years. 
from its fifth year, it grows like 30 foot in like six weeks. But then it's, is that from the six, is that from the five years of watering or is it from the six weeks? It's from the five years. So yeah. when people are feeling down and out and depressed and wanting to give up, you all understand like it's a process. Things take time. You're not just going to get out of depression tomorrow. Yeah. It takes time. You're not even going to realize when you're climbing out of the quicksand. But then there's going to be one day where you're just like, oh, I can breathe a little bit better yeah. than I could breathe last week or a couple of months ago. You get it off your chest incrementally. Do Take your time. I mean? yeah, when yeah, you're that's... ready as well, don't don't necessarily be forced to do it. To you. Um, I think it's like when you're ready, which is what happened to me. Like when I was ready to talk about it, mm -hmm. that's when I started feeling a lot better. Um, and it was obviously... At, a pressure point um, but the relief the absolute relief you get from just saying you know what bro I'm not good today patience is a and, virtue man and like if you like you talk about if you're not feeling it today and your boys or whoever call you up and said let's, let's go out or whatever you're like bro I'm not feeling it today man it's all good yeah mm. you guys go along without me but if they don't then realise that potentially there's something not mm -hmm. quite right then you need to technically change the group of friends you're with because yeah. they're not out here looking out for you either. Mm -hmm. I think that's important to surround yourself with people mm -hmm. who will have your best interests at heart. 100%. And a lot of people don't have your best interests at heart. No, they're just there to use and abuse. Yeah, 100%. So as men as well, we we don't do the best job at supporting our Each friends because, because we've naturally been grown and groomed from young of be tough be this be that when you get older we have no we have no strategies or skills to be able to even handle it if our boy is going through something we're like uh if anything we turn it into banter yeah because we banter. don't actually a, know how yeah. to be in touch with our emotions yeah, yeah, yeah. and do you know what i mean so that's another issue of finding the right group of friends but also educating each other and speaking out of being like yo bro i'm not good and it's not banter. Yeah. Like, I'm not joking. I'm genuinely not. Do you know what I mean? And once you place. communicate, if that they're still on some jolting, then remove them because yeah. they're not a part of the solution. Yeah, they're part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's great that you say that because um, that you talk about the support from guys. Um, it is very, very much uh, a thing you see on social media as well where you would see a girl post a photo the support's wild. But our friends go absolutely berserk. I them. love it. I love it, you know. Yeah, that's how yeah, it should say, be. Right? Like, the girls be hype, like, her hype girls be on it, right? And then we post an image of ourselves or our boys be like, oh, bro, you're flexing too much. You're trying too hard, blah, blah, blah. This A young girl, even if it, at the most you might get a young girl, I'm trying to be like you. You know, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. And then you see the girls, oh, girl. Oh, yeah. yo, you're killing it. You're slaying, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You're looking at it like, eh, I'm not even going to come back and say you're not. Yeah. The support you lot have got, though. Yeah. I love it. That That is props to the girls, right? Props to the girls. And guys, we need to change. We need to change. Like we it's need not. To change our attitude, our style, and, um, you know, help each other up rather than constantly trying to bring each other down. It's cool and, to support I, your friends, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I also find it um, very more evident in our like race and yeah. black people yeah. like, i feel like if if a black person is doing well you almost guarantee there's going to be about 10 people behind him him he or she hit a them. day them you find them trying to pull them back crabs in a barrel bro rather than lift them up mm -hmm. and i always say that where i come from where i was born and raised in the caribbean um i find that the asian families around there the way they they support mad on it. It's insane. They help each other up to then create businesses, mm -hmm. create brands, um, build houses, bit like big big houses. And once each other is doing well, then you know the money kind of stays wherever. Yeah, it's like it the is. Jew, like the Jewish, same thing. Chinese, same thing. Like our culture, we don't really be doing the best of that. It's crabs in a barrel. So, I, like I hear, we you. need to change. We need to change that. <laughs> I hear we, need, yeah. we definitely need to change that. Um, so going back to to the modeling modeling thing. So how did you tell the agency? You got signed by the agency. You got found, scouted. Got, yeah, like in the that... gym. Um, <laughs> you went to the gym. <laughs> you know what's funny? Yeah, 
I had a candy floss high top, so I had the like the man knows. He, he's the one who <laughs> shot my first ever. So like when I oh Matt, my first ever modeling, like I yeah. just signed. Yeah. And I hit the man like, uh, yo, bro. <laughs> I need some shirts. I'm brand new to modeling and it's COVID and that and I got sent you like like could you help me like just some shots? And we went like met up at Castlefield and we got some sick shots. This is when I just turned my hair blonde. But right before that, I had a candy floss high top and no, before that it was black, like like ombre. Then I, I was like, you know what? This modeling thing is probably never gonna happen. I love pink and I love colours. I'm dying my hair. Boom, I had a candy floss high top. Then I got scouted for modeling. I'm like, okay, is this all it took? Then as soon as I signed with my agency, they're like, eh, I know you've been having your hair for like eight years, but our whole agency thinks short and blonde. I said, wait, what? Like, yeah, the agency and the industry, they'd love you like short and blonde. I was like, what? Then Hefe, my boy at Voodoo Cuts next door, he he just, he was like, what? You've been talking about trying to model. Boom, cut my hair. I was like, what? And then on my birthday was the day that I went short and blonde. And then right after that, got a test shoot. And then like, it just started going from there. But don't get twisted. I was on Unlisted. Then I was on Next Gen with like 13 year olds, 14 year olds. Then I went to New Faces. And then I finally got a main board. But normally it might take certain people years. Yeah. I got to main board from Unlisted in like five months yeah. because I was test shooting like Constantly. three, four days a week, bro. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking. I bought a camera and I've set it up on like a tripod, like you lot I've got. I'm taking pictures in front of my white wall. White wall. Then I'm hitting up uni students because remember it's COVID. Yeah. Yo, do you want to shoot? They're like, yeah, I'm going to shops. I'm maxing out my credit card, getting clothes, making sure to take photos, but not mess up the clothes, keep the tag in them. Then boom, <laughs> sending that back. My credit score was like this. <laughs> you get me? The things we do, bro. You know, no, one, no one was knowing, but yeah. the agency, they're like, Cause I don't know much about modeling. I'm like, oh, all these other models from what I'm seeing, they must be test shooting five days a week. So me doing three tests a week, every week for like three, four months, oh, I need to keep up. Yeah. My booker said to me, she was like, yo, Cove, we can't keep updating your book because you're coming with a new test shoot every two days, bro. Yeah. We can't keep doing that. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, oh yeah, the, the main models, they do like one test a month. I'm like, and that's supposed to be classed as frequent, but because I'm coming from the basketball world, yeah. we work hard, bro. If you're going to yeah. make it to the top, you put, in put the, work. the hours in. And I'm used to, because I'm a shootout, I would be on a shooting machine four hours, a thousand makes a day on top of two practices in the evening, just getting my shots up. So in modeling, I'm like, I'm just going to translate that level of hard yeah, work to this. this. Yeah. But it doesn't directly correlate in terms of getting the jobs, jobs. like putting in reps in, in like shot percentage. But... For me to climb up so fast and show them that I'm serious, yep. the test and how much I was on it really showed them, yo, he's he's serious. So then they then put in the work to help you then. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's important that they do that, isn't it? So um, that obviously helped confidence as well coming into, into an industry that, look, my agency believes in me. Mm. And the thing is as well, though, I used to have mad skin, bad, super bad. And I always tried to model, always tried to yeah. model. Skin weren't having it. But I still kept the confidence of one day, one yep. day. Then my skin cleared up and that, and I've gone and I've I've still got the personality from what I had before. Now the looks have caught up. And I'm like, I've just gotta stay in it. My man. guy said the looks. You get me? He said the looks have caught up. Oh, hey. Sweet by over there. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> give, me, give it to him. Give it nah, to him. Like, bro, like my skin used to be so bad. And I had to, as a male, we don't wear makeup, bro. No. As a woman, you're putting on makeup over when your skin's bad. As a male, I'm going, I'm going out there bare, bare faced, bro. I don't even know how to put makeup on. I'm looking at my mom's stuff like, yo, I don't even want to go out today, but I'm just, I, I don't know how to do makeup, so I'm just gonna have to just own it and pretend like it ain't what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But so like to finally get the chance to model, bro, I'm just like, yeah, man, because I always believed. Yeah. And I was even thinking in my head, you know what? If no one wants to book me, I'll just make my own agency, bro. But you talk about <laughs> put, put, put makeup on, um, it is pretty standard now in the industry yeah. for male grooming. Mm -hmm. Um, that, 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 that as it sound, male grooming is just makeup, by the way. Love um, male using grooming. makeup. Um, and <laughs> for me, like coming through the ranks now and, and doing this for full time, I personally 
now try and have a makeup artist yes on every shoot i'm doing yes unless it's like a personal project um where i'm shooting a youtube video or something like that then i, I try not to get too creative with it mm -hmm. but if i'm doing a personal project where it needs to be pristine i'll always get a makeup artist should have it Amira? i i even now ask makeup artists on jobs what product to use in there what this because like being a model now, when I'm doing test shoots, the, your premium test shoots, you can see the difference of when you've had makeup applied yep. and when not, even in post-production. And now I'm at the level of, of modding where all my test shoots need to be at a certain quality. Yep. Even if that's down to the clothing, certain quality, the location, certain quality, the photographer, certain quality, making sure my grooming, everything, certain mm -hmm. quality, everything has got to be high level because it'll pull your book down or yeah. it won't even get into your book and you've yeah. just wasted everybody's time. time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I 100% um, agree with you on male grooming. Like, it's super important. It's almost do it intentionally. Make sure that everything that you do is intentional and, mm -hmm. um, you know, like you talk about putting in the work, uh, the work with the intention will then produce the results that you, you mm -hmm. know, you, you definitely need. Um, so what's what's next for Kofi? What's next? What what have you got planned um, for the modeling and also for the brand? Got a lot of stuff planned. Um, have you got anything big? What modeling wise, we just kind of have to see. Um, just go from with, there, really. Go just the, like go with the flow. Just, yeah, go go with the flow. I'm really more focused on my mental health business, you know, and pushing that because now I'm starting to get momentum because I'm not playing basketball nine months. And then in the three months I've got outside of vacation and resting, trying to dibble and dabble in it, I'm actually starting to make progress and get some momentum yeah, now. Yeah. So we've got the men's um, mental health month campaign next month. Um, doing Black History Month campaign right now. Uh, potential partnerships with like some big organizations, um, businesses and stuff, and just getting more into the education system in terms of destigmatizing mental health and helping teachers, students and parents as a whole school approach. Because yeah, it's yeah. super important. You can't just help the student when the teachers are people also going through their own madness and then the parents are going through their own madness. So you can't just help one and not the others because they're all in it together. Yeah. Um, so I'm really looking forward to learning about that because I've been in it, but now I'm really immersing myself in it and I'm growing and I'm learning. And hopefully very soon we should be putting on like a Why Not I event yeah. for the public where it's like a panelist type thing and people can um, definitely chime in and stuff. So yeah, just mental health for the culture really. Just, and, and also to finish off, you mentioned Black History Month and um, mm -hmm. there's a, um, a current um, trend mm -hmm. I'm seeing um, from, a few of the popular black creators where they feel like brands are not reaching out to them and brands are sending stuff to creators who are not necessarily black to mm. actually try and promote black history month mm. have you had any sort of like problems with this have you found any issues with this has any brand reach out to you this Bra month to, to do anything in color coloration with black history month if i said that right Brands still hit me up like normal, that. but what I have found is, hey, can you come speak for Black History Month? Um, we're not going to pay you. It's like, what? So all my trauma and all my experiences, you want you want that for free for your gimmick of this. Like, because obviously it's Black History Month, I need yeah. to put on a, a front yeah, to yeah. make myself and, look and good. And remember, I'm done. you was a part of my own Black History Month campaign, yeah. which is about the violation of it just being a month. Yep. No other race has got has been given a month. <laughs> so really, if I wanted to get real into it, if anything, it's a vial that you've given us a month. What do you mean? Here's your month. What? Okay. Nah, but instead I decided to go peace and do, okay, I'm going to do Black History Month, but I want it to be the start of something else. That's why it's, I'm rooting for everybody that's black yeah. in terms of, that's got nothing to do with just this month. Yeah. March next year, you'll see me rocking the same clothes because... It doesn't make a difference to me the month. I don't care. I'm black all year yeah. round. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Black night days. You get me? And I wanted to get it away from Black Lives Matter because it's wild to me to be begging not to kill us. That's madness. 
So I wanted it to be more positive because black people have done amazing things and have been changing culture, world. If you look at the amount of stuff black people have invented, it's brazy, like day-to-day stuff that we yeah. need. They ain't got the credit or we don't know about it. And I know there's a lot of stuff in Black History Month I don't get to learn. They don't give me that information. No. And two, the only movies we ever get really ain't about black e- excellence. It's about the slavery nonsense. You get me? And it's like, okay, we should learn about that. But I want to learn about the positive stuff we've done as yeah. well because that's the whole of our culture. Do you know what I mean? If anything, slavery was like a small part of it. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole lot more of of the of the thing. So I'm I'm quite pleased um, that you say that as well um, because I'm also seeing like a lot of the like UK rappers, even American rappers, who are actually being involved with. Uh, bigger brands now as well, like giving mm-hmm. more opportunities with bigger brands. Needed, bro. Know. We're culture, bro. I don't care what anyone has to say. We're it, culture. It's, all, it's almost like, um, you know, like the Naomi Campbells have set the standard, but then it suddenly died out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, supermodels and stuff. You know, yeah. supermodels. And now you've got like, the likes of the Winnie Arlo's, mm-hmm. you know, doing their Fire. thing. Absolute, like, Fire. one person I've definitely got to shoot one day, man. Even like Alton Mason. Our right. number one supermodel in the world, young black guy, he's fantastic, bro. I even study like his poses and stuff like that. And I'm like, he's unapologetic. And even when he walks a run- runway, bro, even if you look at how he walks, a lot of these other models, it's very robotic. Yeah. They've given him the keys and said, yo, like, do, you. do your thing. And because he's a dancer as well, he's out there vibing and stuff. And I'm like, he's got to a level now where no one can tell him anything. That's beautiful because a lot of people can't tell other people anything. But when it yeah. comes to like black creatives, you've all got something to say. <laughs> you feel me? But he's in a position where you can't tell him nothing. You can tell by how he's out here being authentically himself. Yeah. And it's beautiful, man. Right. And you know what? That's a great segue. Um, and I think that was a good conversation. We might have to get Kofi in again to have um, another conversation with us and uh, follow up just to check in, see how he's doing, how the movement's doing, um, and anything we can do as a business here at Be Cool Studio to help push that message, please do reach out and let us know, man. Um, That's been a really, really good um, and uh, insightful conversation with Kofi. Um, Thank you very much for joining us. Um, So we're going to wrap it up here, and I want to let you guys know, remember the motto, be cool, be true, be you. Peace. Bow. Bro. Mad things. Bro, that was tight, you know, still. It's tight. Good good insight there still.